This Week in Money is archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Gerald Salente is publisher of the Trends Journal and founder director of the Trends Research Institute. He's online at trendsresearch.com. He joins us today from Kingston, New York. Gerald, welcome back to This Week in Money. Oh, thanks for having me back, Phil. Hey, the Spring Trends Journal is out to focus on three key areas, war, freedom, and economics, all tied together neatly in a little package. But I want to talk about uh, probably the most dominant theme here, and that is war, the war against Iran. But we can't call it war, can we? We have to sanitize it. Oh, yeah, we could call it like they did with Libya. What they call it? A time-limited, scope-limited kinetic action. <laughs> a humanitarian mission. Yeah, that's it. You know, it, it, this is uh, nothing more than propaganda, or maybe impropaganda, if there was such a thing. And it, what, what's going on, and is very, very important for, we believe, most people to uh, consider looking at, and that is history is repeating itself. And the only thing we learn from history is nothing. And here's how history is repeating itself. The crash of 1929, followed by, of course, the Great Depression. Currency wars, trade wars, World War II, the Panic of 08, the Great Depression slash Recession. There's a depression in Spain, a depression in Greece, a depression in Italy, a depression in UK, a depression in, in Portugal, a depression in Ireland, a depression in Romania, Lithuania, Hungary. There are depressions all over the world, all over the industrialized world. Now, Currency wars, right? already going on. Brazil's screaming all the time. Australia, New Zealand. Well, look what happened to the Swiss. They pegged their uh, Swiss franc to the, to the euro because of the currency war. And now trade wars. They're heating up. You keep hearing this rhetoric about China on and on. The next thing is world war. And the world war is in, unfolding in front of everyone's eyes. Last week... 100,000 people in the Czech Republic. That's a lot of people mm-hmm. demonstrating. Demonstrations going on virtually every day in Greece, Spain, Portugal, general strikes in Italy. They're going to be voting on a, on a referendum whether or not to keep going with the Euro bailouts over in Ireland. When the money stops flowing down to the man on the street, the blood starts flowing in the streets. It's war. It's only different. And now what they do, as they always do, what they do is they identify an enemy for everyone to hate. Mm -hmm. And remember, let's go back to after 9-11. Besides Osama bin Laden, it was them Taliban, I tell (laughs) you. And what we're going to do is we're going to get al-Qaeda, and they're never going to be able to go anywhere again. And 11 years later, and a trillion dollars lost, America's still there, as are their flunky allies. Canadians included. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the money that they keep sending over there in the troops. So you you look, and and it's just another level of history. And now, of course, last week we saw, every day in the news, the North Koreans are going to launch a rocket in a dangerous area of the world. (laughs) And you look at this footage, and it looks like these guys had a big erector set. One lousy, stinking rocket that barely made it off the launch pad. They had the people freaked out in fear and hysteria for over a week. Oh, oh, by the way, uh, Phil, last week, uh, wasn't it India that just sent up an ICBM that could hit Beijing and Shanghai? Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay. You know why? (laughs) Because they're doing business on our terms. Yes. And the same thing with Pakistan. The same thing with Israel. How many, ro- how many nuclear bombs? No, 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 don't talk about Israel's nuclear weapons. We're not allowed to. No, no, it's off the... No, no, uh, you're an anti-Semite. <laughs> can't talk about their nuclear weapons. And you can't talk about France's nuclear weapons. You can't talk about the U.S. nuclear weapons, Russia's. But no, and Iran, if Iran has a nuclear weapon, then they're going to wipe out Israel. That's the propaganda. And it keeps going on. What have they got? They, one weapon they, they may have in a couple of years. Israel has 300 of them, ostensibly. You know, anybody, if Iran attacks anybody, they, they turn the country into glass after they'd be bombed so hard. But it's the propaganda and the fear and hysteria to keep people's minds off what's going on economically. 
The housing market continues to decline. There's a depression in Spain with over 25% of the people unemployed, 50% youth unemployment, and that goes through with a lot of other countries around the world. So when all things fail, they take you to war. We are talking to Gerald Salenti on This Week in Money, and I love this quote here from uh, uh, Trends Journal. You mentioned that Iran is a replay of World War II, but in reverse, and that's fascinating. Explain what you mean by that. Well, what happened is that, you know, again, people forget the fairy tale. You know, they believe the fairy tales. You know, history is written by the victor. And as I mentioned earlier in this conversation, it's a replay of World War II, trade wars and currency wars. You know, Japan was the China of, of manufacturing and dumping cheap product onto the markets back in, in World War II days, pre-World War II. And so what the United States, Netherlands, and the U.K. did was they started shutting off Japan from getting any natural resources, okay. including oil. Now they're doing playing a reverse flip with Iran. What they're doing is they're calling a state of war, an embargo. Everybody look up what embargo means. <laughs> an embargo means war. They can't sell their product, oil. And some 80 percent 60 to 80 percent of Iranian income comes from the sale of oil. And now because of the United States, the European Union, and other c- countries and areas of the world, they're shutting out Iran from selling oil. So they're putting them in a warlike position as they did with Japan. Does it make it right when they strike back? No. But does it make it right to put sanctions on them, to force them into action? No. Are you getting the feeling, Gerald, that this whole Iran situation is simply Iraq in a different package? They've just changed the name and, and the same kind of conditions are going on, right? Yeah, what they do. And let's oh, remember the Iraq war. How come nobody's brought these these chicken hawks like uh, Tony Blair and 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 uh, and George W. Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld and yeah. all the rest of them that told us that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda, and none of the free world was safe unless we overthrew his government. And they never found any weapons of mass destruction and ties to al-Qaeda. And yet the war went on for how many years? Eight years? Mm -hmm. A trillion dollars spent? A million Iraqis killed? And and, and, And the hypocrisy. No one ever says anything about this. You know, they used to call these war crimes in the old days. Now it's just, you know, let's forget about it ever happened and uh, let's start a new one. Interesting messages coming out of uh, Washington these days, Gerald. And if you think uh, the president is hawkish uh, on Iran, what about Romney, Santorum and Gingrich? Here's Gingrich. I, I couldn't believe this. Worried about a missile strike on Cleveland. Yeah, I know. And Santorum went on Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah, you know, madman mullahs, you know. Yeah. And, and, but again, they use fear and hysteria. And Romney, I mean, this guy, he's shooting his mouth off about what we have to do with Iran and, uh, and his vice presidential candidate, ostensibly Mark Rubio, what they have to do to Iran and unilateral action. Mm-hmm. Here's, you know, Romney is around my age, 65. Okay. And I was, of course, prime draft meat during the Vietnam War. And the way Romney beat it was that, now remember, 1965, 67, 68, imagine what France was like. Wine-loving, cigarette-smoking, caffeine-addicted, Bridget (laughs) Bardot-loving France. And there they send them over as a Mormon missionary to convince, oh, all Catholic France, to convert convert French people to Mormonism. That's how that little slime ball with his big fat mouth beat the draft wow. now wants to take our country to war. All these men with cojones the size of mothballs, <laughs> they're ready now to tell us what we should do and how we should fight as they never even have been in a schoolyard yeah. fight, let alone a barroom brawl. These little chicken hawks who would never send their children and don't have the courage to send themselves, now they want to start a new war. Here's what I have to say. Anybody that goes to, wants to go to war, go. 
Yeah. Send your wife, send your kids, send your money, lead the charge, keep me out of your psycho trip. And the- don't give me the line that I don't support my country. Yeah. I, uh, I support the Constitution. My country's not a bunch of flunky, little, lame politicians. That's not my country. These people couldn't lead me across the street. And Jer- yet, people go. And what they do is they prey on the, on the weak, they yeah. prey on the, the patriotic, and they prey on the people that have no other alternatives in life, so they join the service to, to earn some money and possibly go to school. And then they sacrifice their lives. Gerald, the only guy who seems to make any sense on, on Iran is Ron Paul. He wants U.S. foreign policy to follow the golden rule, and they boo him for it. And that tells you the state of the American yeah. nation. Go listen to Obama's State of the, uh, state of the Union address uh, back in January. He began it with war and ended it with war. And that's what this nation is. It's a nation that, Dure- that Dwight D. Eisenhower, five-star general, supreme commander of the Allied forces, two-term president, a Republican at that, he leaves office and warns the American people that the military-industrial complex is, ra- ra- is raiding and ruining the country and robbing it of the genius of its scientists, the sweat of its laborers, and the future of his children. We're talking to Gerald Salente on This Week in Money. And let's look at the big war picture for a second here. You're asking here, uh, I think, a great question. How is it possible that in a democracy, debate is stifled while war is being waged? Why are we so afraid to look in the mirror of history? You know, I, I, I was just in Berlin, and, and I saw what, the resem- what was... You could see the destruction that happened from World War II with the new buildings mm-hmm. built in between the beautiful old ones. And I kept saying to myself, how did this keep going on so long? How come the people didn't rise up and stop them? And I have, a German, I have German friends, and they all tell me the same story. They said, you know, I, I, when I was 16 years old, when a 148-year-old woman told me, I confronted my grandmother and said to her, how could you have let this happen? How could you have let them take the Jews away? How could you have let them take us to war like this and destroy our country? And the grandmother said to her, you don't understand. We didn't lose our rights in one day. They were taken away from us week by week, month by month, year by year until we had none left. And then when you spoke out, they would take you away. You'd never mm-hmm. hear from you again. And, and you couldn't talk to your neighbors. You couldn't even talk to relatives. You were afraid. And that's what's going on now. And that's why the cover of the Trends Journal is all aboard, next train to Auschwitz. <laughs> Kiss those calories goodbye. Yeah, exactly. And this isn't done to, you know, to, to, to inflame people with rhetoric. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's done to make people look at what's happened, for example, in the United States with the passage of the National Defense Authorization Act on New Year's Eve yeah. when no one's paying attention. That allows the president now to call Gerald Salenti a belligerent of the state, have the military come and take me away, have no judge, no jury, no trial, no charges, no habeas corpus, and they could kill me just like that. Boom. Jack, you're dead. They don't know about the Supreme Court ruled about three weeks ago. That if you don't have your seatbelt on, you have a little argument with a cop and they arrest you and they take you to jail, bend over and spread your legs. Yeah. The Supreme Court said strip searching could now be done on everybody and anybody that's booked to go into jail. This is America. Try this one. El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, the Banana Republic just <laughs> south of you, he could now declare martial law under executive order at, quote, a potential, potential, potential threat. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Oh, here's one more. Big Brother, now every stroke of your keyboard, every conversation, listening in right now, whether it's on the telephone or cell phone or, or whatever you're talking, whatever images they pick up, you, what they're doing is they're putting algorithms in place to determine whether or not you are a future terrorist or could become an enemy of the state. A potential threat. That's right. Yeah. I feel like a potential threat just talking about it. Yeah. 
Gerald Salente is publisher of the Trends Journal and founder director of the Trends Research Institute. Spring Trends Journal is out. You don't want to miss it. Much more on Iran, plus the battle for freedom and uh, some great stuff on the state of the world economy. Put your money where your mind is and subscribe. You can find out more at trendsresearch.com. Also, if you're on Twitter, Gerald Salente and YouTube, Gerald Salente Channel. Always interesting, Gerald. Thanks for talking to us, my friend. Hey, thank you, Phil. After the break, David Smith on This Week in Money. <laughs> 